morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, good morning Instagram, good morning Facebook, good morning YouTube, good morning all around, all sorts of social media. Sorry for the tardiness this morning, a couple minutes tardy. But as I go forward, get my music on. Let's go into prayer this morning, y'all. This last day of this year. The last day of this year. Hallelujah. Glory. Let us go into prayer as we walk into a new season, a new year, new territories. Hey, Shakalabo. Let us put on to the word, for the word of the action this morning. Ha, sake it, ebo, sake it, it, Glory, 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 glory. As we go into prayer. <clears throat> my, my, my. Let's take this year out with a bang. As we come in with a pow pow. Bombs over Baghdad. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let us go into prayer. Hey, ha, she, ki, gabo, si, ki, de, bo, 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 sha, ka, ba, ba, bo, si, ki, de, de, bo, si, ki, de, de, bo, si, ki, de, bo, si, ki, de, bo, ha, she, ki, de, bo, bo, bo. Father, we just give you praise, Father. We give you glory, Father. That this year, Father, as we come into a new year, Father, that we put your word into action, for God. Father, God, let some wake up, Father. Because your word says in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And God was the word forever, O oh Lord. The word settles in heaven. The faithfulness endures into all generations. For you are God and God all by yourself. And in his word, heal them, deliver them from their destruction. You shall by your words, God. Let it go forth from my mouth <laughs> that your word should not return void as your word says, Father. But I should accomplish, but it should accomplish what I please coming out of my mouth, Father. But your word says it should accomplish what it, what it was set out to do, Father. And it should prosper in all things for which it has sent, been sent, Father. For your word by this prayer, Father, in John 17, 4, I have the glory and your earth will complete the works that you have sent me to do, Father. In the cross, the word cried out, it is finished. And God was already said that I am alert and active and watching over the word to watch it perform, Father. So, well, Father, as we put on your word, put your word to action this year coming up, Father, that we have decided, Father, and decree over everything, Father, that it is established in our hearts and our life, Father, that the light of God and the favor that you shall lay upon us, Father, that it shall go forth with, that it shall go forth with power and demonstration, Father, that it shall go forth, and as it go forth, Father, but as it go forth, Father, we decree your word, Father, to try to each and every one of our problems coming up, Father. For your word will carry us to an another season, Father. For your word will hold us down, Father, in our physical healing, in our physical hurt, in our physical pain, Father. Let your word go forth. And most of all, we pray, Father, that, you, that we build ourselves up on your Holy Spirit and your Holy Faith. Praying that the Holy Spirit lead us. Lead us, Father. Praying that the Holy Spirit lead us, Heavenly Father. And we ask, according to your word, that Jesus our Lord, in our life, sickness, disease, and power, that's over me, Father, that I am forgiving everything from the sin and guilt that I am dead to sin, alive and righteousness, according to Colossians 1, 21, 22, Father, that you have given us abundant life, that we will receive life through your word, Father, flowing in every organ of the body, every in our bodies, bringing life, healing, health, according to John 10 and 10, Father, John 6 and 63, Jesus bore my sickness and carried my sin, Father, 
and carry my pain. Therefore, that we give a place of sickness and of pain to God that sent his word and healed me. In Psalms 107, 25, he sent his word and he healed me. He healed us, Father. He delivered us, Father. He brought us and saved us from destruction. And Heavenly Father, as we go forth in your word this season, Father, as we begin 2024, Father, and leave 2023 behind, Father, release us of our minds, Father. Release of, 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 of our good attitudes, Father. Release us of the stress and the burden and, the, and, and everything that we carry on us, Father. Let us not carry it in over to the new year, Father. The new Roman calendar, Father. That this year, that we stand firm on your word, Father. That we would not compromise with the world, Father. That whatever you tell us to say, have us to do, whatever assignment that you have us on, that we carry it out with power and demonstration, Father. That we carry your word forth, Father. And we look forward to doing what you want us to do, Father. Because, Father, some of us are ready. Some of us are willing, Father. Some of us are ready, Father. We're ready, Father. We're ready, Father. We're ready, Father. Mark 10 45 says for every for even the son of man came not to serve to be served but to serve others and to give life as a ransom for many father father we're here to serve and give ransom and give life to many father as your word go forth with power and demonstration father we set it out we set it out we set it out as people looking for a word, Father, as people trying to figure out a word, Father. Let us not be politically correct, Father, but let us be spiritually correct this year, Father. As they look and try to figure out one, two, three, one, two, three, what's your meaning, what you're saying, Father. But I come this morning, Father, as the topic is this morning, Father, the topic is the three as one. We not worry about one, two, three. One, two, three. The three as is one. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the three for the Holy Ghost. And we're, you're telling us, Father, that you're coming back the second time. That's the word, Father. That you're coming back the second time, Father. One, two, three, one, two, three, one for the Father, one, two for the Son, and three for the Holy Ghost. You're coming back. You're coming back the second time. Yes, it's a roar to you for the coming of the King of kings and Lord of lords. And Father, we pray that our hearts, our minds, and our spirit be right. As the word says, as, as, as the devil try to come as a thief in the night and try to steal, Father, we stand firm on your word, Father. One, two, three, one, two, three, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the three for the Holy Ghost. But we stand, Lord, yes, your children, as we come and know that you're coming back for us. That you left, as you told us, I go to prepare a place in the kingdom as you come back with your true royalty. You come back with true power, all power. And Father, let us be ready that we will not cross, that we will not cross our assignments, our destination with the process that you have carried us on, Father. So let our hearts be pure to you, Father, as we receive Jesus Christ of being Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Father. And as I close this prayer, Father, we seal it and let every word that proceed out of my mouth this morning not be of me, Father, but let it be of you, Father. The three, as in one, mean that there's only one God, one true living God. And the only way we can get to God is through your son, the ransom. The ransom, as Mark 10 and 45 say, 
for he give life and he is the ransom for all of us so father as we go forth with the word of god this morning we lift you up and give you praise and let every word that we see out of our mouth be for your people heal deliver set free in jesus name i pray amen He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. He's worthy. He's worthy, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. As I finish praying and people get ready to come on, share, tag, subscribe to our YouTube, to our podcast to our pages welcome to fearless kingdom ministry right here in jacksonville florida i am apostle tommy garrett of fearless kingdom ministries and i am fired up for this year because i know god has something for me all that i have been through all that i have suffered and gone through as i begin this topic this morning the three as in one you'll get it by the end the three as in one and as I go forth with the word we're coming from second Peter second Peter the first chapter 15 to the 21st verse and if you have it I'm gonna read it with the music I don't I, some some tell me don't turn the music down this morning because I want to come that we get delivered that we get set free coming into a new a, a new year the destruction of the doctrines that we had to go against for the last couple of years destruction of sickness the people that we lost the things that we had to battle the strongholds that we had to deal with the sickness that we had to carry and, and, and go it makes you think it makes you wonder when Paul said he had a thorn a thorn in his side and you have so many people debating what was the thorn that Paul had. But I come to a conclusion this year, as we begin another year. The thorn that he had was a stronghold, a battle that he had to battle, a personal battle that he had to battle. That trustworthy him being trustworthy to carry the word. Not knowing the process that he had to go through as I get ready to read this scripture. And the Lord told me to read Peter for a reason because when you are trustworthy of God, prophetic word, and you carry something that a lot of women love, love to use a baby for nine months and you know that you're carrying something that only God can give you. Man can plant a seed as we should do as men because that's our God given assignment. But as we give the seed it has to be planted on fertile ground. And as it be planted on fertile ground, that thorn that Paul was talking about is we had to be trustworthy of his prophetic word. We had to be trustworthy with his word that he sent as men. We can't get caught up on the assignment in the, in the process of everything that's going on in our lives and Everything that's going on in our lives that God is, is sending to us that we are bearing and that we are have to battle. God is letting us know without a shadow of doubt that he is God and God all by himself. And as he is God and God all by himself, we can't carry the burden of the world with us. And as I wrap this thing up and get you to understand that 
Good morning, good morning. He is telling us this year that we have to be trustworthy of his word. And as we be trustworthy with his word as Paul, and as I read this scripture, Peter had to go through the same thing to finish his assignment. Because when, we're, we, when we learn that we're trustworthy of his word, Paul had to learn, Peter had to learn. First, we got to understand what love is. See, man can give his own definition of love, but you got to give the definition in the process what God wants to have. And God said in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, 4 to the 7th verse, God said love is patience. Love is kind. It always protect. It always trust. Always hope. And it always preserve. And when you get the true understanding of love. As you carry it, it into 2024. Understand the patience that you had to deal with. The things that you had to go through. It had to be love that brought you through. Understand the things that you had to battle. The people that you had to go against. The spirits that you had to fight. It had to be the kindness of God that brought you through. Understand all the people that died, all the people that left us this last four or five years that we loved and cherished, but didn't understand that every day we have to cherish it like it's a jewel. But we had someone that had to be there with us. The love that we had for them. The Bible says in Corinthians that love always protect. It protected us. Through our shortcomings. Through our failures. To our love and kindness to the other ones that we lost. The pain, the hurt. The regretness of some of us didn't get to say or do what we want to do for them. Even we may say something bad that we're regretting to this day that we couldn't tell them that we were sorry. But God said love protects. They know the truth. Even in the place where they are now of sleep, they know the truth. Then the Bible said, love always trust. We got to trust. We got to learn to trust. We got to learn to trust our people. We got to learn to trust people. We got to learn to trust man. But God's not talking about trust him with this compromising spirit of what the world trusts. Trust him with the wisdom of God, the word. As we live a kingdom lifestyle and trust the word of God, we can walk in love. It's hard. Yes, it is hard. It's hard. I'm telling you from a point of view of a man that I done did some everything, but I had to understand that someone was praying for me. All the years that I was doing the wrong thing. Not doing that. God, someone was praying for me. And the love. That was shown to me. Was the love of hope. The prayer that someone. Was praying. My mother. My grandmother. Them, was praying that they hope. That I get it right. I hope. As they prayed. They hope that I. Can carry on the torch. They hope that the light bulb. In this brain, in this mind, in this heart, turn on. And the light bulb turned on. The hope that they prayed for me, Tommy Garrett Jr., the pastor of Fearless Kingdom Ministry, a man that's striving to live a righteous life, a man that's took care of his family and did all he could the right way. I didn't cut corners. 
in the beginning I tried but God sent me a wife a helpmate to help me stay on the path of righteousness stay, stay near to the word and live the word and as we learn together to live the word and live the right way and understand that the hope that I see now of the prayers of the righteousness the fervent prayers of the righteous that was praying now is my turn to pray for my seeds to pray for my people to pray for my loved one even to pray for my enemy the only way we're going to turn the hearts of the enemy I, I know I haven't gotten to my sermon yet but I'm getting there I'm getting there the only way that we can turn the hearts of our enemy is hope and pray for them even we're too busy worried about all the false prophets all the ones that sang and getting on Facebook wearing Facebook out because they got all the time in the world because that's that's that that's what the assignment that they are on The devil's on his job. Now it's time for a lot of us to get on our job. The hope that our forefathers prayed for is that we get it and we carry out the assignment of the kingdom of God. As Jesus said, he come to preach and teach the kingdom of God. And he said, I pray for those Father who you gave me. See, Jesus prayed for us. That was us in that prayer that he said, Father, I pray for those who you give me. And Father, I pray this morning, I pray for those who you give me also, Father. Because we may get on a crooked path of righteousness. But the word says, love, as I get ready to go into the word and give you the scripture. In 1 Corinthians, love always preserves. This year, as I give you this prophetic word, as I get ready to go into my sermon this morning, love preserves. He preserved us for a time such as this. He preserved our ministries for a time such as this. He preserved us in the midst of everything that went on a lot of us as COVID come back around survived COVID but we lost family members loved ones that we cherish and love but he preserved us as the torch went out and the Holy Ghost left them and they went on to a better place the torch was passed to us to carry on that torch that we may be preserved to carry the torch so that the next generation can learn and be filled and be lit by that fire of the Holy Ghost. As they lit with that fire of the Holy Ghost and carry that word, Corinthians can't lie. The prophetic word can't lie as I get ready to go into my sermon because love will cover a multitude of sin. So as we get ready to walk into love, as the topic was this morning, the three as one. The three as one. As we understand that, as we learn to walk with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the three as in one, we understand the trueness of love is patience, love is kind, love protects, love is trust, love is hope, and love preserves blessings, blessings. And as I get ready to go into the word, yes, I have a word this morning. As we get ready to come in this year of 2024, 2 Peter, the first chapter. And I'm going to read the 15th to the 21st verse. Amen. And as I read it, I just want you to dig in, dig in. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you everyone for coming online. Um, share, describe, like. 
Um, if you want to sow a seed to the ministry, you sow a seed right here, Fearless Kingdom Ministries, uh, right here, PayPal, me at Fearless Kingdom Ministry, Cash App us at Fearless Kingdom Ministry. Let me get all this stuff out the way. And we're right here in Jacksonville, Florida. As I go forth with the word, first, second Peter, I'm sorry, second Peter, the first chapter, the 15th to the 21st verse, and it reads, Moreover, I have carefully ensured that you always have a reminder of these things after my of after my decease. For we not follow cunning devices, fables, when we made known to the powers and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are ever ever eyewitnesses to his majestic. I'm reading, I'm reading from New King James Version, verse 17. For we receive the God, the Father, honor the glory, when such of the voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And we heard the voice which came from heaven, which we were with him on the holy mountain. And so I have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do will, which you will to heed as the light that shines in a dark place until the day of dawn. And the morning star rises in your heart, knowing the first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but the holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, the three as of in one. And what God was saying in his word, as Second Peter was explaining, everything, blessings, blessings, blessings this morning, everything that we see now, God is ensuring us in his word. As verse 15 says, I will be careful to ensure you always as I always have reminded these things after my deceased, after I am gone to prepare a place for you in my deceased, I'm coming to you and I'm telling you and I'm giving you confirmation of who I am. I'm letting you know that I speak to you through my word. It doesn't make a difference what people may say, what people may do. If their lifestyle is not lining up with his word, meaning they're not living a kingdom lifestyle of his holy word, and we should know them by the fruit. Don't be fooled. Don't be caught off guard. Because the word tells us right here. It says in verse 16, For we not follow cunning devices, fables, when made up known to you in the powers and coming in our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are eyewitness of his majestic. In God's majestic power, in his majestic word, his word does not lie. His word will not go back void. His word is telling us that everything is going on. Now, preach the word in season, out of season. Live the word. In season, out of season. Because when he gives you true confirmation of who he is and his prophecy of his word, he letting us know that God is talking to us. He's talking to the ones that's showing fruit, that's bearing fruit. How many of us are bearing fruit? What I mean by bearing fruit is how many of us are truly trying to live the scripture? How many of us, of us that's on our job and letting our lifestyle speak for itself? Not us going out trying to put Jesus on somebody, 
that ain't even ready for Jesus. Just, just, just try to compromise with you to get you out of their face. No. You're showing the love of Jesus Christ that's in your life as you live a kingdom lifestyle. And as you live that kingdom lifestyle, not that wretched lifestyle that man lived, a kingdom lifestyle. And that kingdom lifestyle, as I break in 2024, because it's about the kingdom. In Ephesians 4.11, Jesus said, I come to preach the kingdom of God that's at hand. And the gospel has to go forward. And as we live the kingdom of God and we preach the kingdom of God, the gospel has to go forward. We, we won't get caught up, as the word says, that he, as he get forth and caught up in fables and caught up in deceit, devices of fables and caught up in the powers of this, 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 this dark world. But Christ, an eyewitness of his majestic of his majestic his majestic word happy new year happy new year his majestic word is that when we live a kingdom life and you carry that kingdom life when you carry that jewel in your heart see the bible says in, in the middle of the bible psalms 118 verse 8 says trust no man meaning that you have to guard your heart with his word. And when you guard his heart with his word, the three as of in one, knowing that there's three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that you are driven by and go forth and trust your fullness in his true power. That's the eyewitness of the majestic. Because you know without a shadow of doubt, the years that we have been through the last five years. That his majestic brought us through. His majestic brought us through all the deaths in one year that, that came across America. And you had almost 300,000 people died that year. But his majestic brought us out of it. Then you had all kind of sickness that's still coming on a lot of us. But his majestic, me being an eyewitness of his majestic, brought us through. Even though I lost the greatest jewel that I can ever have on earth, that I, that I, that I looked up to and I respected the most thing that so close to Jesus that I respected her so much was my mother and I lost her. When she was alive, I thought, what would I do if something ever happened to my mother? But the majestic of his word that carried me, he is the only way, the only truth that I am an eyewitness that I still have my mind. I still have my, my, my I still have this flesh. I'm, I'm still in my right mind. I, 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 I'm still carrying myself, having dropped the gospel. Some people will give up and just don't want to preach the word, don't want to walk in the gospel, don't want, to, don't want to do nothing for Christ. And they blame God. God did it. God took my mother and I, I ain't doing nothing else. But his majestic word that I was an eyewitness of God brought me through all these things that I had to deal with. Moving to a new city, change, losing a job, making Great money. Everything at one time. Losing my mother. Everything at one time. But I was an eyewitness to his majestic word. That when you hold on to his unchanging hand, he can carry it to the next season. And he carried me to the next season, which is now. And he still carried me on. As I still preach his word. And he wants us to know in his word, the three as in one. <coughs> as I speak, verse 17, and the word says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory when the voice came from him in excellent glory, that this is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. 
This is what a lot of us want to hear. See, we got the son now. Because the word says, great is he. That's in me. That's he that's in the world. That we got the son. And we do our well-pleasing job. And not be deceived and carry on the word. He is the one. Because God is speaking to us. Through his son. Through the word. Because he's that three. Which is in one. And Matthew 17. Five says, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly the voice came from the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. Hear him. Are you hearing him? Are you hearing the word of God? Are you living the word of God? Are you living the kingdom of God? And it is it in your life because the word says, hear him. And as we hear him, we can walk with him. We can do the things that he wants us to do because he said, hear him. This is what God is trying to tell us. Hear him. Mark 9 and 7 says, And it came in a loud cloud and shattered them, and therefore they came in the voice out of the clouds. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Hear him. Are you hearing him now? 2024. He wants you to walk in power and demonstration. I'm finna work this thing together now. I'm finna work this thing together now. Because I want you to hear him. He's, he, I want you to hear him. Because then when you get to verse 18. He says. And we heard the voice. The prophets that was on the mountain. On the hill. The disciples, his followers, say, and we hear him. Are you hearing him? 2024, we got to hear him. And as we hear him and carry out the assignment, let me finish reading. I'm getting ahead of myself. And as we hear him, the voice which come from heaven, and when we were with him on that holy mountain, when you get into that place, of secrecy when you get into that place of not being disturbed by no one I mean no one so you may have people in your ear you may have people on your job trying to set you up trying to trying to taunt you trying to get you out of character you may have people in your household your children you may have people trying to get you off the path of righteousness but the Bible says, hear him. Hear him as an eyewitness of a kingdom carrier. You got a jewel. You have a jewel that's inside you. You have a gift that's inside you. A gift that you have had all this time. And it was free. This gift was free. But you got to hear him. You got to hear him. And as you hear him, you ain't going to go out of character. Because God is a God of order. Everything that he do is order. Everything he do is set in his word and is set in order. You will not do anything or compromise his word. And what I mean by compromise... His word said we will cut. He moved in decent in order. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit will not do anything out of order. Let me get to his word. As they said, him on the holy mountain. Verse 19. So we have, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed. The prophetic word has been confirmed to you. Of 2024. Hear him. See people. Love the holler. That you can. Give so many interpretation. Of his word. No. That's not right. No you can't. It's only one 
interpretation of his word, what he says in his word. And if you not understanding his word and you coming with all this interpretation, yes, the Bible has been used to slave, hurt, kill, torture, bondage, put people in bondage. But that's not what it was set out to do. The same people that used it out of context. The same people that used it to hurt, kill, steal, destroy. Is the same spirit that was set out. That same Antichrist spirit that don't even like Jesus. It's the same Antichrist spirit that people are listening to today. You can give so many interpretations of this word. No, you can't. Because God crossed all his eyes. Dotted all his dotted all his eyes. Crossed all his T's. He didn't miss not one beat. And what I mean that he didn't miss one beat because it's in his word. When you hear him and you know that it's him, the word says the prophetic word is confirmed. Which you do not well to heed as the light that shines in the dark. When you are the light, meaning that light bulb in your heart, that light bulb in your mind, click on with the Holy Spirit, you will hear him. That still quiet voice that cries out in the wilderness, you will hear him. She just said, you will know my voice. And when you know his voice, you know his word. As the word says, shine in the dark place until the day of dawn, until the morning star rises in your heart. In your heart, you know who's calling you. In your heart, you know Jesus is speaking because the word says you heard God. When you go up two more scriptures, he said you, you heard God. And you are our witness. But when the light shine in the dark place, that still quiet voice come in that dark place, when you are in a dark moment and you know that Jesus is talking to you and he tells you to go do this, carry out this assignment, and God shows up in the midst, the word tells you that he will rise in your heart. That's why the words tells you to guard your heart. Don't trust no man. Because man heart, not filled with the Holy Spirit, can be wicked. And the word says in verse 20, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For anyone want that scripture? For anyone want that scripture. When people come to you and say. The Bible has been misridden. The Bible has been. And, and ter um, messed up and rewritten. And all this right here. The word says. In 2 Peter. First chapter. Verse 20. It says. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of scripture. Is of no private interpretation. It's of no private interpretation. Meaning that. It's not private. But it's meant for those. That will have a relationship with him. Those. Who build a relationship with him. Those that read it. With their heart tear. The Bible says. If I believe in Jesus Christ with all my heart, soul, and might, and I receive him, and as I receive him in my heart, and I believe that he died and arose on the third day, I'll be saved. So that's why the word says prophecy of scripture is of 
none any private interpretation. It's not private to the saints. It's not private to the saved. It's not private to those that's hearts are pure for Jesus. It's not private to those who accept Jesus for who he is, for Jesus is God. It's not private to the great counselor. It's not private to the ones that love him. That's why Jesus went to Peter and asked Peter, Peter, who do they say that I am? He want Peter, Peter, what, what, what spirit is you listening to, Peter? Peter, who do they say that I am? See, that, that private interpretation of what Jesus was trying to get out of Peter. You better, you better listen to this revelation. I'm trying to get to you now. That private interpretation, what, what that test that Jesus was giving Peter is, Peter, who do they say that I am? They meaning man. He was trying to get Peter to see him spiritually. Not what man say, not what man do. He was trying to get Peter not to be politically correct, but biblically correct. And when you understand that we can't be biblically correct, we gotta be political, not politically correct, but biblically correct, we understand the word. Because the word says that he is the morning star. He is the, 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 the light. He is God. He is our redeemer. And his, the word says you should know him. Or we should know his voice. So he asked Peter. Peter, who did they say that I am? And Peter said, they say that you are God. And Peter said, you had to get that. Not for man. As I go forth to the next scripture, not for man, but the Holy, the Father had to give it to you. The Holy Spirit had to give it to you. The three as in one had to give it to you. See, when you understand and you hear him from the three in one, when you really hear the Holy Spirit, the three that's in one, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know without a shadow of a doubt that the Father is speaking. So this is what he talks. When they say they, they can't understand the Bible, there's many interpretations. But the Bible says the first prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. It's, it, 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 ain't, it ain't private to the saints. It's private to them devils. Because they know the word. But they don't understand the word. Why is that? The devil know the word. He was up there with God. He walked in line. Here. He got, got up there and said. <coughs> in the book of Job when you read it. He was walking to and forth the earth. He knows the word. But he don't have the Holy Ghost. He hear God. But he don't have the Holy Ghost. Ichabod written all over his forehead. The Holy Ghost have left him. As they have left a whole bunch of things on earth. Churches. Temples. The Holy Ghost have left it. And this is why they can't get an interpretation of the word. Because don't you know. If the devil knew the word. Jesus would have never got on that cross. He would have stopped redemption. Of the great sacrifice ragged down. Prophecy fulfilled itself. Right there on that cross. The devil would have stopped it. The devil would have never. Never ever ever ever. Understood. What the word said. When the word said. If I be lifted up. I will draw all men. When Jesus was lifted up on that cross. We were drawn by the Holy Spirit. And he went and died that three days and got up with all power. Don't you know? 
why they can't understand and why they keep saying that the word is misinterpreted because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They read this thing from their knowledge, from their perspective, their opinion. They put politically correct selves, but no spiritually correct, no biblical correct. And this is what God is telling us. As, verse, as I get ready to close in verse 21 says, For the prophecy never came by the will of man. Prophecy never came by the will of man. Because when you're out of God's will, you're, near, you're not listening to his prophecy. When you're out of God's will, he's not even hearing you. He, he's, he's not even dealing with you. The Bible says, For prophecy never came by the will of man, but by holy Men of God, this interpretation of this word of God was inspired by holy men of God. It doesn't make a difference what you say the men was. It doesn't make a difference what you call them in their background. But at that moment, they was in God's will. And the Bible said that they was holy men of God. And they heard his voice. And the Bible says God's holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, the three as of in one. And as you move by the Holy Spirit this year, by God's private interpretation of his word, I decree, I declare over you this year that you will not be stopped. That you will not be held back. That no man or no false prophet will stop you and hinder you of the process of who you are in Christ. Because the word says right here, it says by the prophecy never came by the will of man. That means man has no power over you. You have all power that has been set in you because the word said, even Jesus said that we would do greater things than he did. All you got to do is just hear him. Yes. All you have to do is just hear him. In the same way that we hear him, the same <coughs> way the prophecy, as the word says, one day, in the end of time, when he come back, the Bible said that he, we, we, he will come to us as he build that kingdom, set up a kingdom for us and come back. And the Bible said that we would hear him say to us as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Son, daughter, come on in. I'm well pleased. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear Jesus when he sit down as the great counselor, the lawyer that sits on the right hand of the Father. The lawyer that's going to stand up for you, stand up for me, and you hear his voice. And God said, come on in, my faithful servant. That's the throne that Paul had in his side. That he carried all the stuff that he did in his past. And he knew without a shadow of doubt that he couldn't allow it to come in. In the work that he was doing. See, you got to be fearless in the kingdom of God this year. Yes. And as you come in fearless, knowing who you are, setting the tone of your race. And as you set the tone of your race. You know without a shadow of a doubt, you can't let nobody mess with you, get you off track, taunt you, call you out and have you get out of your, get caught up because God is doing something this season. All of us that have been waiting for something and waiting for our time, our time is here. The three and one 
is here. It's our time. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And I'm not talking about the wealth of the world because we can't take the wealth of the world with us. I'm talking about the fruits of the Spirit. The true power of the Holy Ghost. The interpretation of His Word. As I gave you in verse 16, the eyewitness of His majestic is coming. Yes. That we will be eyewitness of His majestic power. Because His Word said we would do greater things. That means that people will get up out the grave. Crusades, tent revivals, people being saved. It's here. But we got to hear him. That we may receive our assignments. Truly. And walk in the process that he wants to walk in. And not get deterred. By some complications of man. Because he's saying in his word. In verse 21, it says, prophecy never came by the will of man. Man does not have will over you. When you are in God's will, no man, no devil, no evil taunt can stop you. Because man will have no power. But the holy men of God spoken as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, that's power. When you truly move by the Holy Spirit, that's power. That's the power. That same dunamis power that Jesus went down and took the stag of death is that same dunamis power that we have to go down and take the stag of death from all this, these people that's walking around living dead. Walk around dead of the spirit of God. Ichabod written on their head. And we got to go get them. But you got to hear. The Holy Spirit first. You got to understand that you got to be on one accord. With the three and one. Because when you own the one accord with the three and one. His interpretation can't lie. His word can't lie. As Jesus told Peter, Peter, who did they say that I am? Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Ask your husband. Ask your wife. Ask your children. Sons, daughter, husband, wife. Who did they say that I am? And you'll be surprised of the outcome in the word that God gives you. See, we can't look at things for which they are in the world because it's set up just for that to hinder us. Are you, are you understanding it this morning? It's set up to hinder us. But when we operate and we tr truly walk in the three in one, which is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit tells us that prophets can never be the will of man, but holy men of God. Spoken by the words and moved by the Holy Spirit. When you're moving by the true Holy Spirit and hear him, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I can do all things. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me as I close. When you understand that your strength don't come from knowledge. When you understand that the strength that you had to deal with this last five years, it didn't come from you being this power authority. It didn't come from you prophesying this mighty word. It didn't come from you. Being this great man or woman of God, it didn't come from you. Being strong and mighty in battle, 
It came from, as the word says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. When he got up on that cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. He knew without a shadow of a doubt that you was hearing him 2,000 years later that you know that you was led by the voice and calling of the great Jesus Christ and you know that the word says in second Timothy and Peter that the Holy Spirit that you are led by can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens him because his word says the devil could have killed him him and me right in the face where we stand as we went through this five years of deceit as we went to this five years of drama and, and heart dealing with our finances and sickness and all kind of things that we had to bear and endure but i come to tell you this morning that god says I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me because when he strengthens you uh, and you know without a shadow of a doubt that you hear the three in one, which is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit come to you and it tells you that if I be lifted up, uh, I will draw all men. Uh, this is where the power of the Holy Ghost rests in that uh, the power that's carried by you uh, and carried by me. Uh, it does not come by man uh, as the scripture tells you in verse 21. It says no turbulence interpretation is come by man but a private interpretation that comes by the holy spirit and that private interpretation what we need is from the lord because the bible says these holy men that i speak were moved by the holy spirit this is the only way we're going to see revival this is the only way we're going to see healing we got to speak to the elements which is that hand because Jesus is back up sitting on the right hand of the Father. And the next time he get up and he step down off that throne, he's coming back. Like, like what's the name said? Like he said he would. He's coming back with all power in his hand. And he's coming back with the righteous in a cloud of saints. And he's coming back with all power, all elect all purpose and he's coming back with a trustworthy of a prophetic word telling us that the powers which is at hand is on high and is coming down to set order he's coming back and the truth be told as I get ready to close the three in one you gotta understand this year that we gotta walk Strictly in the Holy Spirit. We got to hear Jesus' voice. Not no other interpretation of a voice. Not no other void of a voice. Not no other irritation of a voice. But we got to hear Jesus' voice. Like he asked Peter. Peter, who did they say that I am? And then he said, it had to be the Father who revealed it to you it had to be the three and one revealed it to you so as I get ready to close let you know as you come in part tomorrow 2024 <coughs> it has to be the three and one that reveal it to you man can't do nothing for you because the Bible says in Scripture, He said, Your private interpretation had to come from the Lord. It ain't for the world, it ain't for nobody else. You got to hear it for yourself. Your mother can't go for you, your father can't go for you, your sister can't go for you, your brother can't go for you. You got to hear him for yourself. So hear He, His holy word, and walk in it. As I close, thank you for joining me this morning here on Fearless Kingdom Ministries. I am Apostle Tommy Garrett. And again, I hope you enjoyed the message. Three in one. Hear him. 
because we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened us, but we got to know and hear his voice to carry out our assignment of who we are. And when we know who we are, because I know who I am. I know who I am. I'm a son of God. The Bible says I'm a son of God. The Bible says I am the righteous. The Bible says I am chosen generation who have been called from my mother's womb for such a time as this. No matter what no one says, no matter what no one does, no matter what, they, they, they may call you Po, they may call you unanointed, they may call you whatever. But when you know and you hear his voice and you know who you are, carry out, fulfill. If anybody been in the military, what they say, soldier, carry out your assignment. Carry on and carry out your assignment. No matter what. Over and out, I tell you this morning, soldiers, men of valor, women of valor, carry out your assignment. Fulfill your destiny of who you are. Know who you are. This world meant to tear you down. But I come to exalt you, lift you up and tell you that you have all power. Because the word says, like I said in Philippians, I can do all things. I don't care what anybody say. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. See, I have, I have some sisters and brothers telling me that 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 that, that you, you 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 think you know it all. You 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 think you you you, you don't want to listen to nobody. You think you know it all. I, I, I'm I'm 52 years old, and I have been through some things. And God have carried me through some things. He have brought me out of some things. I don't think I know anything. But I do know one thing. I hear God's voice. And when I hear his voice, I'm not trying to be politically correct for nobody. Don't care about being politically correct. All I care about is being biblically correct. Because I know when I'm grounded, ten toes down in his word, I can't go wrong and I can't lose. So I come to tell you this morning, get ten toes down, 2024, soldier, and carry out the assignment. Amen. Y'all be blessed. We love y'all. Right here at Phyllis Kingdom Ministry for 2024. The last sermon of the year. And I hope you enjoyed it. Soldiers of the almighty high God. Hushaka. Look, what's the old, that song them old people say? So I'm, I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army. You a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So as I close, carry out. Fulfill your assignment, soldier. Know that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who stilted you. And don't be politically correct. Be biblically correct. Because the word tells us right here in 2 Peter, the 21st verse says, Prophecy never came by the will of man, but the holy men of God. Spoken as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's biblically correct. Don't let no one tell you that this word has been tampered with, diluted, or anything. Because the word tells you right there that the word stands by itself. Spoken as I am moved by the Holy Spirit. Y'all be blessed. I love y'all. Until next time, 2024, I'll see y'all next year. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a good day. Enjoy your services. Hallelujah.